What's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So in this video, I wanted to uh, give my initial impressions and a review of my first vintage Swiss luxury timepiece. And that is this guy here. This is a Breitling Aerospace. And this particular reference heralds back to uh, production in the 1996 up until about 2000. So it's like over 20 years old, but it's still ticking away like a champ. And uh, interestingly, I wasn't actually planning on picking up this watch, but another local watch enthusiast and fellow YouTuber, which you may know as the Watch Hipster, uh, so shout out to his channel, uh, he wanted to do a trade, so I actually had to give him a few watches to get this uh, Breitling on my wrist, but nonetheless, after wearing it for a few weeks, uh, I'm fairly happy with how versatile it is, and also... Just a number of complications it's very practical and it is an analog and digital watch so it has like the uh, analog hands but you all also will note that it has two lcd displays which help display the multiple complications such as a perpetual calendar multiple time zones and a chronograph uh, things of those nature so it's a very practical and handsome timepiece i'm glad to uh, have it in my collection and in a minute, I'm going to flip perspectives, and that way you guys can see the watch up close so you can get a breakdown of the dimensions of the watch and also go over the features and give you uh, the positive and negative aspects about this particular timepiece. All right, guys, let's take a closer look at this beautiful vintage Breitling Aerospace. This one is the reference number F65062. And again, the production run for it was between 1996 and 2000, so it is fairly old. But kind of a neat feature about this watch and subsequent iterations of the aerospace is that the case is in full titanium. And then these rider tabs here along the bezel um, are said to be 18 karat gold, but maybe they're just gold plated. I'm not 100% sure. If you guys know, please put a comment down below and uh, I'll be happy to see your guys feedback on that now as far as dimensions go this watch still holds up really well even by modern standpoint so you're getting a 40 millimeter across the case flipping to the side you get a very thin profile of just under nine and a half millimeters in total thickness tip to tip here this comes in at 45.5 millimeters and then this lug opening here for the supplied brightling leather strap is 20 millimeters so Given its low profile and the lightweight nature being made in titanium, just makes this watch very comfortable to wear, and I think very versatile as well. And uh, I love the overall layout of the dial. It's extremely legible. The sapphire crystal has an anti-reflective treatment on both the top and underside, and you can see that it basically disappears unless you go at really harsh angles. There's also some dimension to the dial because there's a really nice chapter ring along the outside, and then you have military time printed in gold. That's the same color gold um, that they used to print on the Breitling logo near the 12. And then also closer to the 6 you see Breitling repetition minutes. And that's one of the complications for the digital display that I'm going to show you a little bit later. But uh, moving inboard you can see that the, uh, the dial does have printed quarter Arabics 12, 3, 6, and 9. And then you have your standard other hatch marks across the dial. The handset itself are very nice uh, broadsword style hands. Again, extremely legible. And uh, the dial, the, uh, the handset and hour markings, as well as the, uh, this uh, loom pip pearl for the bezel, does have super luminova. I'll throw up a loom shot just so you guys can see how legible it is in low light conditions. And I'm actually pretty surprised that it does hold up very well, given that it's a 20-year-old watch. Okay, before I, t I show you the, uh, the digital um, complications, let me just talk about the movement itself. Now, yes, it is a quartz movement, but not all quartz movements are created equally. Uh, this is the Breitling Caliber uh, B65. 
Um, so these caliber movements, they're based off of a, the thermal line from ETA, specifically the ETA 988-332, which means that, again, it's a thermally compensated quartz in chronometer spec. Their estimated accuracy is supposed to be very high, between like 10 and 20 seconds a year, something like that. Anecdotally, I can tell you this watch is keeping perfect time, but I've only had it for a few weeks, so that will remain to be seen. So um, I'm not going to give you an in-depth tutorial of how to operate every single feature, but let me just quickly um, rotate the crown. And by quickly rotating it clockwise, you can start to flip through the different digital features of this watch. So you will have on the top LCD the, uh, the setting mode that it's in, and then the actual function is um, in the lower LCD display here. In this case, you have an alarm set for 7.30 in the morning that's toggled off. If I were to depress the crown, you can see I just toggled it on, and then if you press in again, it toggles it off. So in general, by pushing in the crown, you're going to toggle uh, different features on or off. By quickly rotating clockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to change um, what display mode you're in. And if you pull the crown out, this will allow you to actually set the time for certain functions. The next feature I turn to is the chronograph. You can see CHR, and then you do have a zeroed chronograph here. Depressing it once activates the chronograph function. And this will run continuously for two days before it stops on its own. But say you just want to time something, and then you want to stop. Pushing it in again stops the chronograph. Pushing in and holding it down will zero it again. So a very useful feature. One more quick wind. T2 is the second time zone. Uh, you can just see that uh, it's currently an hour behind the local time here. Uh, 1600 military hours and it's more like 1700. And then flipping it again, we'll go to a timer. Now again, this is set to zero. If I pulled the crown out and then rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, when I spin the crown, that will adjust the time. And then you can just pop it back in place. Uh, this one, you will see that the upper display is blank. This just shows you the day of the week, because it is Tuesday, and the day of the month, being the 22nd. Uh, this shows continuous seconds, so up to 60 seconds. And then this shows you, again, the, uh, the day of the month. Now, another nice feature about this particular movement is that the step motor for the minute hand, it advances not just once every minute, like a typical quartz movement, it advances every 30 seconds. So you can see it just jumped here. And then uh, let me just flip this over to the actual time. You'll see when that gets to 30 seconds, it'll advance one more time again. Okay, you can see it's about to hit 30 seconds and it just advanced again. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now, if we move away from the dial itself, and uh, let me actually just turn this off. Okay, let's say you want to time something using an old school analog method. Well, for that, you have the 60 minute uh, bi directional bezel, which is 60 clicks, very positive and satisfying detents. And again, you can move it in either way, but uh, you can use this as an impromptu timer by lining up the minute hand with uh, the luminous pearl here at the 12 o'clock of the bezel. The bezel auction is really nice. I feel like it's secure enough that you're not just going to bump it and turn it in either direction. You're really going to have to manually operate it. It's easy to grip with the rider tabs, but if you flip to the side and look at the bezel itself, you can see that there's individual screws here. And I think these screws help fix the bezel in place, but it also gives you a bit of traction if you're going to turn the bezel. Now moving on to the finishing. I mean, this is pretty much a purely satin or bead blasted titanium finish. You can see that the crown itself, it does have the, uh, the B logo for Breitling, which is a nice touch. And then moving away from the case, you can see the supplied leather strap. I mean, again, this is a really old strap, but it's held up pretty well. It's, uh, it's really thick. They bolstered the leather here. You have white contrast stitching. And it was in pretty rough shape. So I'm going to mention that uh, 
I actually took some mink oil to this and reconditioned the strap and it made it a lot more supple and a lot more wearable. Now if I want to dress this up a little more, I also really enjoy this um, this Breitling because it is a more of a pilot style watch on this German Flieger leather strap which uh, it just pairs really well and I'll throw up a shot for my Instagram of me wearing it on this strap. That said, the supply strap is holding up pretty well. And uh, let me actually show you the uh, deployment. So here you have a stainless steel deployment class. You can see inside the class is milled out very nice in high polish. Then you have Breitling on this side. And then you have, this is obviously saying it's stainless steel. And then on the back, if I move in, you can see the case back. So the case back to this watch itself has a lot of text on it. It does give you all the different uh, specifications. Uh, I will mention that this watch is 100 meter water resistant. Um, and this is the model number below that here. And then you have a really nicely etched in Breitling logo right in the center there. So uh, here's a wrist shot for you guys. And uh, I think it wears extremely well. It's very comfortable on wrist. Um, those lugs turn down and a low profile really just help it stay anchored. And because it's so light, again, I sometimes forget that I'm even wearing a watch at all. So are there any negative aspects to this timepiece? Well, I can just see from an operational perspective, everything is done um, by this one senior crown which is actually really cool that they designed it um, just based around one single crown. But uh, if you actually want to switch between the different modes, I think you would actually have to physically take this watch off your wrist, uh, rotate the crown clockwise to the right um, complication that you want, and then put it back on your wrist before you can operate it. Uh, just because this operation has to be done very quickly or else it's not going to register, and the other thing I will say is that because, uh, you know, you can push, to, you can depress this crown just by using force, there might be the odd time where if you just uh, flip your wrist up like this, you might actually um, activate or toggle a feature you didn't intend to do. But aside from that, guys, I think this watch, it's an overall keeper as a vintage Swiss luxury timepiece. I really enjoy the design, uh, the complications for this watch and uh, just the profile is, is just amazing. But again, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.